you're gonna see what we've seen all this weekend teamer adventures versus sultai ultimatum Mani, who do you think's got the upper hand in this one I, I've got to side with this build of Sultai from Gregor. He's undefeated against Teamer Adventures on the weekend. It, only two matches, but still, it, it is a track record. Now, this build from Javier, a little different. We've been alluding to it. More counter spells, no Elrin's epiphanies to kind of bog him down with expensive cards. So, certainly can present a different avenue of attack. But this hand at the moment, it, it's a bit too reactive, which may play into the game plan from Gregor. Yeah, two copies of Sword coming there, a Bone Crusher Giant. Does pick up a Love Struck Beast, though, so can get going with the creature plan here, playing this Heart's Desire token out on turn two. Yeah, that Love Struck Beast does a great job of getting onto the board rather than just feeling like you're sitting back on a stomp or foretelling a solid coming. Now Javier can at least make plays onto the board and will likely get a hit in with this Lustruck Beast before Gregor is able to put a Binding the Old Gods or an Extinction event on the board, and uh, that damage will add up over time. Just Barra Sentinel is the draw there for Javier Dominguez. Has three lands available to him, so I'll be interested to see here what he decides to go for. If he just wants to run out this Lovestruck Beast and start getting board presence down and get hitting as quickly as he can. Yeah, I think this is more or less the last turn that we'll see Javier want to tap out and play this Love Strike Beast. Uh, if he finds another blue source, then it's definitely the last turn, as we'll likely see him just play Jesper until the next turn and sit back behind the sod coming. It, otherwise, he may go for a line that evolves foretelling for a turn and just hoping that Shregorsh isn't able to do too much with four mana. As we can see in Kowalski's hand, there's two copies of Binding the Old Gods. An Omen of the Sea here, able to get cast at instant speed, so... Unfortunately, one of these creatures is gonna die, and the little love struck beast looks like it's a prime target for that Binding the Old Gods. Yeah, it really depends on the line Javier takes here. If he goes for something like Edgewall Innkeeper or Jesper Sentinel plus a Fortel, that will likely lead to Greg using that Extinction event on Odd to get rid of both the One Drop and the Lovestruck Beast. If he just passes this turn or Fortels something without playing a One Drop, we'll likely see Binding on the Lovestruck Beast. But for Javier, it doesn't look like he's going to be able to keep an offensive force while also leaving up Sod coming on future turns. So one of the two things will happen if he starts sitting back on counter spells well Gregor has more time to try to develop if he doesn't Gregor's hand is full of answers to the board that Javier presents yeah it's so kind of stuck in between a rock and a hard place here for Javier isn't it yeah, exactly. He would have loved to see a fourth land there, just be able to have more options, especially if it was a blue land. I think Javier would just feel like he has this game more or less on lock. As things stand, he doesn't have great options available to him. Playing a 4-3 here, it does do the job of putting more on the board, but it walks even harder into that extinction event, and it falls by the wayside of the fact that he may just not be able to cast Sod coming again the turn after, because he won't have it foretold, he doesn't have double blue available, and he won't have that Jasper Sentinel either. <laughs> Kowalski just wondering what's taking Javier so long, and there's a lot of decisions to be made here. Yeah, between multiple cars that have multiple modes of casting them, <laughs> it certainly you can understand Javier's position of agony here as he, he needs to figure out not just this turn, but by making a decision he's this turn, he's essentially making decisions for the next two to three turns of his game, and that's not something that you can take lightly when you're playing for a spot in that championship match. Yeah, you're certainly going to see the players use all the time available to them. They want to get into the finals. They want to take on Arna Hutrameth. And they want to be the champion here this weekend. Yeah, it looks like there's at least a Binding the Old Gods in Greg's top two. We'll likely see that one head to the bottom. As good as Binding is in the matchup, you don't really want three of it. You're looking for cards like Ultimatum to pay you off for all this ramp and removing that you're doing. I think now with the Jesper Sentinel, it's going to be really tempting for Greg to just fire off this Extinction Event, get rid of these two creatures. The other option is just Binding on the Lovestruck Beast, but that's enabling potentially five mana 
Arena from Javier the next turn, and that could lead into a dragon. You see Javier not happy with that result, draws a tap land, also not great, and now he may need to just play Edgewell Innkeeper and pass with Sod coming up, and he, he may not like what he's forced to counter on these next few turns. Again, a tricky decision or a tricky situation that Javier Dominguez finds himself in. Not just Barra Sentinel would have, you know, if a land had been drawn, would have been able to unlock an Aldo Gargaroth there. So a very heads up call there from Kowalski using that extinction event to get the all two for one. Yeah, I think this is great from Greg. He's recognizing that at the moment, Javier missed a land drop. So his next play might, may also be a three drop. Rather than going for something like a Shadow's Verdict, he's going to bait using the Binding the Old Gods here. Hope that Javier, maybe missing land drops, will play another adventure creature trying to draw out of this uh, mana screw that he's facing. And that will prime him for a Shadow's Verdict on the next turn, feeling fairly safe that Javier won't have a counterspell at that point. Sword coming, the only answer to a Shadow's Verdict, but desperate for land drops here. So Bone Crusher Giant is going to come on down and there will be a Fabled Passage off the top of the library. So as it stands, the only thing that Javier can do is Petty Theft something away on Kowalski's side of the board. Yeah, I think Javier taking a moment to think about whether he wanted to use something like uh, foretelling Sod coming on that end step, considering it's not likely he'll have any valid targets for Petty Theft this turn. Opting against it, just leaving the mana and keeping more options available for himself. Now Greg, with that Wolf Willow Haven draw, does have the option of going Haven on a land and then Shadow's Verdict, further ramping his mana and set setting himself up for a potential ultimatum off the top. Just has to find it. Where is that ultimatum hiding? Hopefully with a couple of extra digs down into the library, he'll be able to find that. No worries of something like a Jawari Disruption here from Javier. This is an open deckless event, so Gregor knows exactly what to play around. The Counterspell Package in the main deck for Javier. Two Sod coming, three Mystical Dispute with two untapped mana. None of those are doing it here. The only thing Javier can do here is potentially Petty Theft that Wolf Willow Haven, but even that is not a high impact enough play. Mm -mm, that's not going to do too much. Kowalski is rolling at this point, just needs to find the ultimatum to get this game under wraps and a sixth land here for Javier Dominguez. Does unlock an Elder Gargaroth, but there's a binding in Kowalski's hands. So that's not going to stick around for very long at all. Yeah, Javier may feel forced to play the Gargaroth here, but that would mean exposing himself to a potential ultimatum and not having saw it coming up. So you see him actually taking the conserva conservative line, put Obosh into hand, leave up saw it coming, but Excellent draw from Gregorish now with the Pelucranos means that if he plays it, Javier doesn't have the line previously available to him of play Brazen Borrower, untap, and play Obosh, attack for six damage. So now Javier will have to choose between countering this uh, Pelucranos, bouncing this Pelucranos, but in the end, all roads will lead to not taking damage on Javier's next turn. Yeah. The Pelucranos on the stack. The big old Hydra for four mana. Kowalski can follow this up with a Cultivate as well, just to get some extra land out. Could also bring Yorion Sky Nomad to hand. And having Binding the Old Gods in hand, that makes big old Sky Noodle a lot more appealing. Yeah, the only thing Greg is thinking about here is, is there any merit to just leaving up mana for a potential fight from Pelucranos? He has to be thinking about the dragon, he has to be thinking about Brazen Borrower, and I think those may be enough reasons for him to just pass here. It's safe, it protects him, Javier will have to use Petty Theft on this Pelucranos if he wants to leave himself with the live draw of a dragon top deck. Goldspan Dragon is the only threat he can deploy while also leaving up Saw it coming next turn, so yeah, Javier really responding to what Greg presents as a threat here, and this is the window. Does he find Goldspan Dragon? Well, let's see. On the upkeep, we're going to crack Fabled Passage, go and get another land, and we find a Katria Triumph off the top. That's not what Javier wants to see at this point in the game. He's very much on the back foot, being forced to react to everything that Kowalski's doing, and he's basically just, you know, running this match entirely how he wants it to go at this point. Yeah, Javier now... It 
either has to deploy the Gargaroth walking face first into binding or he'll pass again and that Pelucranos is still there and you see exactly how Greg's understanding of this matchup goes. He knows that right now he's playing a tempo play. This game isn't going to come down to put Yorian in my hand and blink this omen of the sea. He wants to set up his draws so he's able to do more and this makes a lot of sense here. Oh, that's so tempting. Elrond's Epiphany on top of the library there you see with the Omen of the Sea. Yeah, we don't know what the second card is. That is what we Greg is thinking about right now. Elrond's Epiphany is certainly tempting, but I think in his position, the goal would be try to get any potential counter spells out of Javier's hand first, which means that, oh my oh. goodness, <laughs> he'll keep both of those on top and he'll likely just lead off with Pelucranos again next turn. Oh my goodness. Two absolutely backbreaking spells there on top of Kowalski's library as Polokranos is going to threaten to come back down onto this battlefield. Will Javier Dominguez saw this coming? He doesn't have the luxury. He can't do that. So Polokranos is going to hang out. Brazen Barra is going to jump down. Likely get eaten here by Polokranos. Not immediately. Not immediately, I, yeah. I think Gregor was not want to expose himself to that potential gold span dragon, but I think once Javier goes to combat and begins an attack, Greg is not going to take the damage. He'll definitely do the fight now. He just wanted to make sure that he's not exposing himself to gold span dragon. Yep. That takes care of Brazen Barra, leaving behind the 3-3 oh. Polokranos. And here comes Elder Gargaroth. Sword coming. Yeah sent into the Fortel Zone, and this is where the bad news starts for Javier. Yeah, here comes desperation. This is Javier saying, I can't wait anymore. He just kept two cards on top, and there's a Pelucranos on the board, so it's no longer that we're playing a game of draw-go. I'm falling further and further behind, but in tapping out, he has given the Greg the green light, and yeah, we've seen what happens when Ultimatum gets cast. Do your worst. Here it comes. Emergent Ultimatum on the stack. A shake of the head there from Javier. Let's see what Greg goes and finds. It's likely going to be the most common package, Voron, Klex, Valky, and Cure Best, uh, Alrin's Epiphany. Uh, could also go for Cure Best of Sea God instead of Voron, Klex. Uh, just set up a few different uh, combinations here where no matter what, as long as Javier doesn't give you the time walk, you've overwhelmed the board. If he does give you the time walk, well, there's just nothing doing at that point. Yeah. Take your pick. What would you like here, Kowalski? I, I would personally prefer not Vorinclex. I would like Epiphany, Valky, and Cure Best of Sea God, but I really don't think there's many ways to go wrong here. Yeah, no. These massive spells coming out here. Here comes Vorinclex and Elrond's Epiphany. So we're going to get another, another turn here for Kowalski, who'll be able to binding the old gods, the Gargaroth, away. Oh, and, and oh, a mystical that's dispute. So brutal. <laughs> Just in case it was necessary, mm. uh, Binding will take care of this Gargaroth, and that just means that Javier has no shot in this game anymore. Nope, and he knows it. So there's the concession. Kowalski wins the first game here, and we're going to go to sideboards. What does Javier Dominguez have to do going into game number two? He needs to draw some counter spells while getting to keep pressure on the board. We saw that's kind of where things fell apart in that game was he had the counter spells, but because he had to tap out for the early pressure, Gregor had the right timing on that extinction event, and that's what allowed him to really take over that game. Yeah, super well played there from Kowalski, just able to keep control of the matchup. You know, even though he was down to 10 life, didn't matter because he was just finding everything that he needed at the exact right moments and stopped whatever it was that Javier Dominguez was trying to do, getting rid of these, the Sentinel, not allowing him to have any extra mana there. So just very well played there from Kowalski. Yeah, extremely well played as they head into the second game. Things get a little harder for Javier. He's bringing in more counter spells, but you see that Gregor is making a more significant change. He's going for that creature package that comes in in some of these matchups where you are trying to play a tempo game. You see a second Pelucranos, two Elder Gargaroth, and a Coma all coming in, backed up with more early removal to make sure that the adventure package doesn't take over the game for Javier. And Gregor 
push up a game again against Team Adventures has to be feeling good about this position. He only needs one of the next two games, at least guaranteed to be on the play one more time to secure a spot in that championship match. So it could all come down to this next game here. Just a reminder, if you are joining us, it is the lower final. Kowalski versus Dominguez. One of these players will meet Arna Huchenbeth in the finals, who is waiting with Demir Rogues. Now, if you're looking from Arna Huchenbeth's point of view, who would he rather face in the finals? What does Demir Rogues enjoy playing against? He's played against both of these players before. He has beat both of these players before. Uh, the best matchup probably for Rogues is this Sultai Ultimatum deck. However, this build that Greg's brought that we worked on is a bit more tuned to have game against rogues. We have those copies of Elspeth's Nightmare, the main deck Pelucranos with the secondary copy in the sideboard. So certainly the tools are there for him to put up a fight. It's just still a very difficult matchup. So I don't think in Arne's position, you would ever to, to go up against the teamer deck over it. All right. Well, let's see who the next finalist is going to be here in our lower finals. Will it be Kowalski or Dominguez? Can we get a quick 2-0 here from Kowalski? Or will Javier Dominguez put up a fight? Let's get things underway here with a heart's desire on the battlefield to kick things off. This is pretty great hand from both players. Javier's hand was only risky because it didn't have a third land. Now it does. It's an untapped blue source at that. Kowalski, on the other hand, has the turn two Wolf Willowhaven. So can extension event as early as turn three if necessary. If Javier goes for this Lovestruck Beast, Kowalski can just respond and use extension event on even. He'll need to leave the Lovestruck Beast in play just to make sure that the one ones in play don't start continuing to chip at him and enable the other Lovestruck Beast sitting in the adventure zone there. So two lands drawn off the top there for Kowalski. Does have the Emergent Ultimatum in hand, is ramping happily towards the seven mana needed. And like you mentioned, does have the Extinction event available to get rid of these 1-1s one and strand the Lovestruck Beast. Yeah, really thinking about, can I afford to name Odd and leave these 1-1s one in play? Or do I need to name even, get rid of the 1-1s, one and hope my opponent doesn't have another Heart's Desire, something like an Edgewall Innkeeper, to enable this beast? I think typically in the position where there's two 1-1s one and a second Lovestruck Beast exiled, you have to go for even with the succession of it. And Greg does have good follow-up. He still has Yorian in the Companion Zone, Heartless Act available to him to target the next creature that comes onto the battlefield. And I think certainly plenty of opportunity here for him yes just weighing his options there in comes the Thai channel pathway and here we're going to see the extinction event let's see what he calls even or odd all right here we go thinking about it it is even, even. so the tokens are out of there and the love struck beast is essentially stranded until we find another one of those one drops the second love struck beast can join the party but it's not really doing too much right now so may be incentivized here to keep up the mana for either the Brazen Borrower or the Mystical Dispute. Yeah, Javier attempted to just play the Bone Crusher Giant here. You don't really want to deploy another Love Struck Beast, risking that it can't attack. The whole game plan behind these counter spells is you have a creature that's attacking while you're leaving them up. If you're not able to do that, this game plan doesn't really work against Sultai because <laughs> they're top decking better than you most of the time. And another removal spell from Kowalski will make him feel even safer in this position. Just remove the Bone Crusher Giant and again ask Javier, what are you going to do to pressure me while I draw my good cards? Yeah, he's just finding everything he needs here. Extinction Events are removed. The One Ones has two removal spells at the ready to take care of the creatures on board. I'm going to pass the turn back and allow Javier to untap. Let's see if this combat will resolve. I'm going to go with no thank you very much as the Eliminate comes on down, takes care of that Bone Crusher Giant, and Javier not interested in countering any of that. He knows what he needs to counter, and it's sitting in Kowalski's hand. Javier waiting to go to his post-combat main phase just to play that catch for your Triome. We'll likely see a pass from him, leaving up Saw It coming and Mystical Dispute. Does have that end step stop set. In case Greg presents something, he could have the option of foretelling Saw It coming on his end step still. You can foretell any time during your turn. So certainly making sure that that is an option available to him. Kowalski gets a turn back, Yorian Sky Nomad into hand. 
two heartless acts as well as the emergent ultimatum in hand ready and waiting to pounce yeah javier could play brazen bar as a creature here again he does need Ooh. to put some pressure on that's an excellent draw for him uh now that'll enable the love struck beast in play as well as allow him to draw another card off the one waiting in the adventure zone if he so chooses or this brazen bar so one of the best draws from javier though if he plays it and goes to combat to keep options open that gives greg the window to remove it with that heartless act in that situation, would we see a counter from Javier Dominguez? Perhaps That's really dispute? going to be tough. It, if he casts the Mystical Dispute, then he's leaving himself pretty much fully exposed to an Emergent Ultimatum. We may not even see him go for this Edgewell Innkeeper, recognizing that he just needs his mana right now. Hmm. So to the end step we go, passes the turn, saw it coming into exile. Very patient here from Javier Dominguez. But like we've seen before, the more time we give the ultimatum deck, the worse it gets, because they just get closer and closer to casting this massive spell and finding everything they need to protect it and ensure that it goes off. Yeah, I think Greg here is interested in just developing Yorian. When you have a creature on the battlefield, you're protecting yourself from Goldspan Dragon, you're protecting yourself from a flashed and brazen borrower attacking, and Yorian as a 4-5 flyer is often enough to demand a counterspell from this teamer deck, and considering Greg's hand is pretty great right now, he does not mind if Javier counters this. Yeah, it's a very good looking hand there from Kowalski. Skynam out on the stack, and Dominguez deciding whether or not he wants to counter this. It's a very difficult decision to make here. Yeah, there's no easy choices playing mm -hmm. against the Sultai Ultimatum deck because they have a deck that can snowball the game, steal it out of nowhere by resolving a single spell, which means that every card they play before that forces you into making a choice. Yeah, it's certainly a deck that demands your attention at every single turn because you could just lose out of nowhere. As we see the Wolf of La Haven brought back onto the battlefield, and now we're going to see Brazen Borrower petty theft away the Yorion Sky Nomad. Yeah, Greg's okay with this. <laughs> That's another piece of known information Ooh. now. Okay, that's nice. Goldspan Dragon off the top of the library here for Javier Dominguez. This will enable him to get some damage through here and be able to protect it with the sword coming as well as the Mystical Dispute. It's going to lead things off here with the Edgewell Innkeeper, see if he can get a counter spell, oh. excuse me, a removal spell. It looks like we're going for the Love Struck Beast. Yeah. That demands the Heartless Act on the Innkeeper. 1-1 one, one gone, no more cards after this one. And Javier can't counter this right now, so I'd come mm -hmm. not available. Let's find okay. another blue source. So that is a good, good pickup indeed. Leave Sword coming, available to him. Yeah, I think from Greg's point of view, you're just happy to go Yorian again. You saw Javier was forced to petty theft it last time. Same question being asked. Can you, do you want to counter this? Are you going to let it resolve? If you let it resolve, how are you planning on dealing with this? You can't attack your goldspan dragon past it. Mm. Mystical Dispute will be a good answer for this. No two mana response here from Kowalski. Can't pay the cost on Mystical Dispute, so Yorion's dealt with. That's one problem out the way. Now, for Javier Dominguez, the ideal draw is a one-drop, but it is unfortunately not that as Bark Channel Pathway comes to hand. Now, if he goes for Goldspan Dragon, the Heartless Act is there. He will get a treasure. He will get the choice with that sword coming in the Exile Zone to counter the Heartless Act, but that would essentially leave all of his defenses down. He'll have pressure, but if Kowalski has that Emergent Ultimatum, it will be disastrous. I think in Javier's position, he's just got to, he's just got to assume that Kowalski has it. And you see him shaking his head because he hates this position. There's <laughs> four unknown cards on the other side of the board, and it, Kowalski is representing power. Four unknown cards are a terrifying thing indeed against this matchup. So Javier Dominguez deciding whether or not Obosh Pre-Pierce should come to hand. 
you know, if there is a one drop off the top and the love struck beasts are ready to attack next turn, that could be very powerful indeed, but he's going to go for the gold span dragon here. You see the shake of the head. He's not happy about any position that he's been put in. Gregor is certainly not going to let him get that attack in. He's hoping, does he have it? He does have it. Oh, the grimace. <laughs> he can't oh, afford to counter no. this. He, he can't. Gre he's Gregor has go. perfect information now. He knows Javier is taking out some number of hours of Hiff, and he's probably all of them in this matchup. That card is a saw it coming, and he gets to force it out now with Elder Gargaroth. He can lead off with a Cultivate, find a land, and then play Elder Gargaroth, force that saw it coming out of Javier's hand, and Javier will have one draw to find a counterspell before this Emergent Ultimatum gets cast. So there's the Cultivate, a couple blue lands found, and here comes the Elder Grogoroth. Will there this be countered? Almost immediately, Javier went for that. You can't let him have it. It's mm -mm. it's too much. It's too good. Okay, all right. That's cards. That's a card, but... <sighs> it's not many cards, but it's something, all right? <laughs> it, it's something, and... Javier casting this Brazen Borrower would still have enough mana to cast a potential Mystical Dispute. Not a side coming. That's Mystical there Dispute! We go. I don't oh, know if Greg is going it. to play around this. He needs a oh, land. He has no. a Seagate Restoration. He can play around it. All he needs to do is take three damage from Seagate Restoration, and he'll know there's not a single out in Javier's deck to prevent him from resolving this Emergent Ultimatum. He's going to play this safely. He needs to play this safely. Is it go time for Kowalski? Will he try and get Emergent Ultimatum to resolve here? Will he put Javier Dominguez on a single copy of Mystical Dispute off that Brazen Borrower and Great Henge? Pelucranos oh. is attempting draw. You can play Pelucranos with double activation. However, you're facing off against a Grand Chedge. Greg needs to be aware of the possibility of Mystical Dispute. He could play around this. He doesn't do so. And Javier has the Mystical Dispute. This is disaster for Greg. Oh, no. Oh, no. His, Look at his face, face drops. You can see that. He knows exactly. He had the answer in Seagate Restoration in hand, but didn't play the land. Javier, oh. you dodged a bullet, sir. This is disaster now, as Javier gets to put Obosh in hand, play it, draw a card. If he draws a 1-1, one, one, a Heart's Desire, an Edgewall Innkeeper, both would be lethal on the spot. If not, it he's needs still to be attacking for 8. It needs to be Heart's Desire. Oh, of course, the Great Henge. All right, he's got right, two Obosh. outs for an instant lethal here. Let's go. There's a forest. That's not going to do it. So 8 okay. points of damage coming in. Down to 7 goes Kowalski. Can he come back from this? There's a forest off the top. Does have Polycranus and would be able to fight something down here. He, he would be able to fight something down. However, because of Obosh, whatever he fights with will kill Polycranus. Mm -hmm. So what he can do is play it, let Greg, let Javier go to combat, block the Obosh, and then fight the Brazen Borrower. Both yeah. of these creatures are lethal on their own, so he doesn't have the luxury of just fighting one of them here. So here comes Apollo Kranos, the powerful Hydra. He's going to be on block and attack duty. He protect, but he also attack on the next attack phase here from Javier Dominguez. Oh my goodness me, this game. I do not envy the position these players are in. This has to be some intense moments here. Oh, Raisin that's Borrower. Lethal. That's that, lethal. That's it. Just pick up Polycranos and swing on in for lethal here. Kowalski is going to know that he had this game had he just played that land. And now he's going to a game three playing for his tournament life. At least he'll be on the play. But against this team or adventures deck, you really don't want to be giving them any space. Mm -mm. You don't want to give any of these decks just a little bit of inch or a little bit of room to breathe. You <laughs> just can't let them have an, an opportunity to come back like this. 
Javier looking at the list, seeing what could he have, and I think he'll come to the conclusion that as long as he doesn't have a counter spell in hand for himself here, he can't afford to play this too conservatively. He's not at risk of lethal, so you have to bounce this Pelucranos. You have to go for the lethal, and you have to believe that at least with Greg fighting the Obosh, he's not dead on board. Mm -hmm. However, if he attacks and Greg goes for the fight, Javier can actually bounce in response. Does Greg have enough mana to double activate Pelucranos? He does. Okay, so Greg is safe at the moment. He has six mana. He can fight twice. So even if Javier responds with a bounce, Greg is not dead. But it's not looking good. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is so close. Super tense stuff here indeed. And we see again, the players just using all of their time up. Javier considering all of his options... One time out left. Mm-hmm. All right, let's go to combat. All right. Swinging on in here. Apollo Kranos. Going to be able to take care of one of these creatures. Lock, fight. There should be enough cards in Gregorsha's graveyard to rebuy that Pelucranos with escape next turn. You see him making sure to carefully tap his mana. He needs to know that he has the colors available, necessary to do it again next turn. The no bounce there from the Brazen Bar. We're going to keep that in hand. Going to come back next turn as Polycranos. We'll oh, it must be just... so tempting to cast Brazen Bar here and just try and find another card. It's so tight. There was Tense a mistake I made there. Our final. There was a mistake I made there in the interaction between Pelucranos and Obosh. Obosh doubles damage that would be dealt. However, because Pelucranos is preventing damage, there is no damage to be doubled. That's why we don't see it take eight from the Brazen Bar. It only took four. So Gregor here can just escape, will have enough mana for one fight, and cannot be the one to use the fight proactively as that would leave him again vulnerable to this petty theft here from Javier. So Pelucranos escapes with the 12 counters on it this time. Oh no. That's a big boy. Don't do it proactively. Greg, don't do it proactively. Just let it breathe. <laughs> it, it's so <laughs> tempting, but if it's the question of do I let Javier draw? But in this moment, you have the blocker. Javier is the one that needs to act. And yeah, mm. really good choice from Gregor. All right. No 1-1. One, one. That's that's the worst <laughs> card in the deck. That is the absolute um, worst card in the deck. Maybe a land would be worse, but okay. Well, it's, I mean, yeah, sure, it's more life. <laughs> it doesn't matter <laughs> at this point. It's a, yeah, it's a redundant copy of Great Henge, unfortunately. Oof. So, two attacks. We're doing the same thing as we did last time. If we're, if we're Javier. Two attacks. Wait for the wait for the fight. Does he have enough mana to do it twice this time around? He doesn't. Javier may be desperate. He may use the bounce now. Greg will fight. The bounce will resolve. Javier will be able to cast Brazen Borrower as a creature. Draw a card. Again, if he finds that heart's desire, it would be game. No attack there. Playing it very, very patiently. All right. Pass the turn. Fight coming. Goodness me. Will you bounce? Yeah, yes, he's bouncing. Yes, he will. All right. All right. There goes Polycranos. Back to hand. It will come back as a 6-6. Six, six. Next turn. Next turn. Duress. Eh, eh, duress is not super exciting at this point, knowing that there's nothing of interest in Javier's hand. Greg can use it just to make sure there's no counter there, but once there's no counter there, what are you doing? I mean, Seagate Restoration is kind of underwhelming at this point with so few cards in hand. So I'm going to rely here on the Polycranos to keep things under control to a degree and then hopefully find something with Omen of the Sea. 
Yeah, the problem with playing that duress there is now he does not have double Polychronos activation. Mm -hmm. it, he only has one available to oh. him, and that's really bad. Oh, no. Okay. I think... I think Javier's got this. Javier, I don't think Five. he has it yet. <laughs> I think he's still alive on Greg's side. He doesn't have triple blue, so he can't bounce the Pelucranos forcing the fight and play Brazen Barrer. He can mm -hmm. play Brazen Barrer, hope to draw something, but still Javier has available to him Pelucranos. No, actually. No, he doesn't have double fight. Yeah, I think Javier does have this now. Yeah, he can only remove one thing. <sighs> yeah. Because, yes, he's blocking the Obush, but he has to fight down a Brazen Borrower, and that means the other Brazen Borrower will still deal double damage before the Obush is dead. That is lethal. Yeah. So oh, here that, comes... That duress was fairly costly. Yeah, not having can double see he's not happy about that. I think Gregorsh is dead. He's looking at the Seagate Restoration. You see him shaking it in his hand. <laughs> that was the land he could have played to cast that Emergent Ultimatum and pay for Mystical Dispute. Oh, there's a Bone Crusher Giant just to add more woes to Kowalski's life right now. All right. For Kowalski, he needs to shake it off. It, mm -hmm. the, I don't believe he has an out available to him anymore. Omen of the Sea, not really able to find anything here. So now it's just a matter of focus on game three. You'll be on the plate. It's still a favored matchup for you. You can turn this around. You just have to reset the mindset now. And for Javier, he's just hit his timer where he's got less than 12 minutes left. So... Got to make sure that he has that in mind, too, when we eventually do go into game number three here. But for now, it's pretty much just a swing on in and uh, try get this game one and done. A heartless act from Gregorsh would be good enough to survive. It wouldn't be good enough here, actually, because the counters on all yeah, the creatures. Yeah, there's counters you need to he, eliminate, I think. He needs eliminate exactly to survive here. Javier is not playing around that. No blocks. Kowalski falls to Javier Dominguez in game number two here in our lower finals. If you're just tuning in, both these players are at one game apiece going into game three. Look at Javier. I can just feel the stress coming out of his face. <laughs> he is, is not happy. Stuff. Absolutely he, intense. In his position, you can't believe that Mystical Dispute worked there. You can't <laughs> believe that the last card in your hand got that emergent ultimatum through and it's breathed new life into his tournament run he still has a chance now all it takes is one bad draw one bad curve out from greg and javier can take this let's talk a little bit about sideboards here going into game three what is it that javier has to do now on the draw he needs to find some counter spells. He needs creatures to present pressure while he has those counter spells. That's the magic combination he needs to put together. That hand from Greg is Ooh. really good. He needs oh, yeah. that to not be there, and it is. So yeah, already a tough road ahead of him. Greg has turn two Wolf Willow Haven, turn three Cultivate or Binding the Old Gods, depending on what Javier plays and what is nece necessary on the board. Ooh, okay, this is going to be a tough road for Javier. <laughs> All right, everyone, take a nice deep breath. Here we go. This is I the deciding game <laughs> between Kowalski and Dominguez, who is going to meet on a Hushenbeth in the finals here of the Kaldheim Championship to get things underway. A land apiece down for both players. Two Bone Crusher Giants, a Mammoth, and Mystical Dispute available for Javier. We got Great Owen of the Sea and Ramp for Kowalski. Yeah, Greg making the decision between blue and black here. I think he'll go with blue just because of those two copies of Omen of the Sea in his hand. It does make it less likely that he has access to a Binding the Old Gods next turn, but I realistically, he's not expecting this odd deck to present a threat on turn two that he expects to need to kill anyways. So he went for the route that if somehow this Cultivate doesn't work out and he doesn't get to grab his colors from his deck, he'll at least feel safe that he can cast one of these Omen of the Seas to try to fix his draw. Now he has the luxury of going for Island Swarm two islands will help fix his mana he can't cast shadow's verdict yet but he's also bluffing a mystical dispute now which it really doesn't affect
affect most of the three drops from Javier, but it is something that Javier needs to be aware of. Yeah. Javier just passing the turn back, happy to keep up that mystical dispute and wait for Kowalski to budge. Kowalski drawing two Heartless Acts, so whatever creatures are developed eventually from Javier's side of things, he will be able to answer them. Kowalski going for putting Yorian in hand. There was an option to main phase an Omen of the Sea there, rather than doing this. Try to find a land, because you do want to be making your land drops at this stage in the game. And then, if you find a land, you have another Omen to play. If you don't, same idea. But as is, this feels like it is giving him an option for the binding into Yorian curve that we like to see from the Sultai Ultimatum deck. So really setting up to make sure Javier doesn't feel safe putting a creature onto the battlefield. <laughs> you can see his hesitation. He's just like, ah, I want to play these, but they're probably going to die, but I want to counter what you're doing. So it's such a tricky situation to be in at every point in this matchup because it always just seems like the Salsa Ultimatum deck is, you know, continuously doing something that works towards that massive ultimatum that you're terrified of. Yeah, Javier just <laughs> playing a 1-1 one -one on turn 4 and passing the turn. That's how he's <laughs> scared he is of the Sultai deck, that he can't afford to not leave up a full-cost Mystical Dispute. And Greg finds a pretty great 2. He finds Karavek plus a land. So now he's able to play Karavek if he wants. That'll get rid of the 1-1 one -one or demand this Mystical Dispute out of Javier. And in either situation, he can continue setting up for the turn after. Kevrick the Spiteful, very good answer to all the one-powered creatures, or one-toughness creatures, I should say. And lives up to his name, too, because it's all creatures that get minus one, minus one, not just the opponents. <laughs> it is all creatures. Now, Javier... Uh, does have the stomp to answer this Karavek. The damage will be done, the 1-1 one, one will be gone, but at least he can clear up the board and maybe work himself towards playing a sizable creature in the future. And you actually see Greg just passing the turn. Hmm. All right, so gonna keep up the instant speed interaction that he's got. An Edgewell, Ed, Edgewell Innkeeper drawn here for Javier Dominguez, so he could run that out and get a card off of one of these adventure creatures. Yeah, for Greg, the recognition there to pass the turn is I only have two black. I can't leave up Heartless Act while playing Karavek. I'm going into Javier's fifth turn. That is the Goldspan Dragon turn, and that is not something I want to walk into. Yeah. Here comes Edgewell Innkeeper on the stack. Will we see a response here from Kowalski? Let's that happen. And down comes the Lovestruck Beast. This what do we fine. find off of our Edgewell Innkeeper? Let's see. Okay, Bark Channel Pathway. Yeah, Greg now has that Shadow's board. Verdict. Mm -hmm. He has Kervek. Uh, you see Javier playing around a Shark Typhoon there, not attacking with the 1-1. One -one. Uh, the ideal thing for Greg here would be another Black Land that comes into play untapped. It would allow him to play Kervek and leave up Heartless Act. But in all cases, he's feeling pretty good about this board state right now. Yeah, I mean, this is certainly something that he can keep control of. You know, That's he doesn't good. have to... Oh, Mystical Dispute, hi. He doesn't have to worry about, you know, taking damage from any creatures. He's just exiling them. They're out of here. And leaving Javier with an empty board seems like the exact place he wants to be. Yeah, Mystical Dispute, great. Clearwater Pathway, also great, as it does give him that untapped black land that he was looking for. Now he's able to Heartless Act this Love Struck Beast on the end step, untap play the land, play Kervek, wipe the two 1-1s, one still leave up Heartless Act and Mystical Dispute, and he's working his way towards being able to play Yorian while paying for Mystical Dispute, and blinking two Omen of the Seas is nothing to scoff at here. No, not at all. Looks like oh, he's, he's got some other plans in hand. He's, yeah, he's going for Yorian. He has his own dispute. He doesn't care if Javier disputes. He'll dispute back. No, I say no to you, sir. And Yorian Sky Nomad is going to resolve. We will see so two extra Javier cards. Is so unhappy. Drawn here off the Omen of the Sea. Oh my goodness. And because of this Wolf Will Haven, he's even able to still <laughs> leave a Heartless Act for himself. <laughs> oh, that's so good. That's so good. Yorian, you are such a good companion, my friend. 
depending on what Greg has available to him right now as he's using this omen, this will really dictate whether he's going to Heartless Act this uh, Edgewall Innkeeper on the end step. I think he's interested in both these cards, and I think because of this, he will likely use this Heartless Act on the Edgewall Innkeeper, recognizing I have so many tools, I don't want Javier to get any cards. Bone Crusher Giants going to get the trigger off of Edgewell Innkeeper while it's still alive. Heartless Act will not kill this just yet. Go again. Let's go again. Let's get more cards. Uh, but this is equally bad. Javier has some cards, but now Greg knows that he oh, can goodness. just resolve Shadow's Verdict, wipe this board, have Negate, have Heartless Act, attack with oh. Yorian. I think we're approaching hard luck territory, yeah. Ailey. Yep, this is looking like Kowalski's game here. Just a handful of gas, and look at the other side of the board. Look at Javier's face. He knows four lands in hand and a Kazandu Mammoth. Everything on his side of the board goes bye-bye to Shadow's Verdict, and it is now all just a matter of time until Kowalski gets the victory here. Yeah, the way Gregors had to play his lands, he had to play that pathway on blue last turn to play Yorian with Mystical Dispute up. Now he had to play that pathway on black in order to play Shadow's Verdict with black up. The result is he still Oof. doesn't have triple green available for an emergent ultimatum should he draw one. But honestly, I don't think he cares at this point. I don't think he even needs it at this point. He's just quite happy getting in four points of damage here, oh. and Javier Dominguez is destroying blanks. There's five <laughs> lands in hand. This is awful. <laughs> oh, this is so painful for Javier. <sighs> he, he does not want to play anything into what is almost assuredly at least a Binding of the Old Gods sitting on the other side in the five cards that Gregor has. <laughs> and no pressure on him, double bottom, looking for an ultimatum, looking for a coma, looking for anything that will increase the pressure being put on Javier and knowing even if he doesn't find it, he's probably winning this game. Oh yes, just foot flat on the gas here. He is all systems go. Omen of the Sea found off the top of the library there, passes the turn back. What can you do, Javier? What do you have off the top here? Let's see if there's anything useful left. It's a bone crush giant. Sure, it's great in most instances, but in this point, in this matchup, it's just not going to cut it. Oh my goodness, and none of the cards in Javier's hand really do anything. Gregor doesn't care about any creature that is coming in at sorcery speed. He has those two copies of Binding. He's just free to go for an Omen here if he wants. There's no reason to use this Heartless Act here. It's the only instance, piece of instant speed removal he had available to him, but may as well just keep the board clear, set yourself up for a potential ultimatum, for something off the top. Yeah. There's an ultimatum. I think he's so far ahead at this point, it doesn't matter at what speed he does anything at, because it's just it's just game over from this point. Emergent ultimatum off the top of the library, this is all but going to seal his fate here. And we are very soon to see Kowalski in it. the finals. Can't pass it yet, but, you know, I, I mentioned he doesn't have there. triple green. It's there. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, no, he can just do one of the many other million things he's got going on in his hand. Here comes Karvik the Spiteful. He's been itching to get on the board for a while now. All right. Pass again. Okay. I'll tell you what, I'll be amazed if we see a fight back here from Javier Dominguez and if he manages to win this. It, it's I will not eat happening. my socks. I, 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 I'm going to be the bold one right now. I'm going to confidently say it. I don't believe that it is possible for Javier Dominguez to come back into this game. He right. can do whatever he wants here. That third green is now available. And unlike previous situations, Gregor has the negate. He's not going to hesitate to cast that ultimatum this time. Oh, yeah. All right, well, let's just dump this hand down, says Javier. Get some creatures on the battlefield. Binding the old gods will take care of them if necessary. All right, Vorinclex, Alrun's Epiphany, Cure Best the Sea God. Go. <laughs> I believe that is a lock scenario from Gregorsh. Let's just get one more scry in there before we uh, Top get to any Kowalski's card. turn. Top oh, any card be. that isn't those. Take the forest. You don't want to draw your Vorichlex. You don't want to draw your Kiora Best of Sea God. <laughs> Just <laughs> leave the forest there. You have you have it. <laughs> the point in the match where you're just like all right now how do i lose this exactly no. you have to think about it. 
what if I give my opponent another turn? Yes, likely their win percentage goes from 1% to 3%, but <laughs> don't give them the 2%. Mm -mm. Merchant's ultimatum on the stack here. Let's see what he picks. Epiphany picked. Vorinclex picked. Cure Best the C got picked. I believe, Ailey, that is game set and match to Gregor Kowalski. Indeed, it is. You see Whoa. the resigned look on Javier Dominguez's face. Kowalski winning this 2018 World Championship rematch of sorts here. But he still has one more opponent to get through after this game concludes, and we are very near the end of it now. All that's left to do is for Javier Dominguez to pick his poison and send something back here. That's his even poison do it. is the big red button. Oh, yes. Oh, I feel for you, Javier. Yeah, there, there's just no chance. He's going through every iteration. I don't give him the Sea God. The birds and the Yorian kills me. If I give him the Sea God, this his is out. That Gregor misclicks the sequencing on the Vorinclex and Skiora vs. the Sea God, <laughs> so he doesn't get the double counters. Once he does, Javier identified the out to live another turn. Unfortunately, <laughs> Gregor didn't fall for it. So congratulations to Gregor Skowalski. That is our second finalist. We're going to see him very soon. When we come back after the short commercial break, we're going to have our reigning world champion, Paolo Vitor Damo de Rosa, with the desk.